Today on the podcast, we are interviewing the CEO of Picturey.ai, Vikram, and he is an incredible CEO with a lot of experience. They have built an incredible tool, which is Picturey.ai, which essentially is a video, an easy video creation platform for content markers that leverages AI to help you create amazing videos. Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Welcome to the show today, Vikram, and thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Jaden. It's a pleasure. Would you be able to tell everyone a little bit about your background and maybe what got you interested in the AI space at the beginning? Yes, um, I have been in the AI space for a long time, a couple of decades now. Uh, I My background quickly is I have a PhD from University of Washington here in uh, biomedical engineering. And in bioengineering, we were basically looking at medical images using AI to analyze medical images. And I've been doing that for dozens of years. And, uh, um, and this, is, this is kind of a shift now from medical images. I got into enterprise software. So I did a startup in the medical imaging space. Then I did a startup in the enterprise uh, software space where it was basically a lot of people who run... SAP, large businesses that run SAP, we had built a product that helped connect SAP with Microsoft, uh, and and we made it really easy. And uh, there was a lot of data, there was a lot of analytics there. Uh, so uh, so we, that was my kind of main entrepreneurship path. And then then I've been uh, ran that company for about fifteen years, built it to about three hundred fifty employees, uh, sold it about five years ago. And uh, and then uh, started this company, Pictory, and um, and we've been running this since 2019. Serial entrepreneur, been in AI for a long time. Yeah, it looks like you guys are doing some really incredible things over at Pictory. Can you tell everyone a little bit about the company and what got you interested in starting that, what your motivation was for, and kind of what your mission is today? Yes. So one of the things I realized as I was building my previous company, Windshuttle, was we had 350 people, and we had one person whose responsibility it was for videos. And over the years, we've seen video just rise. Everybody wanted videos. And uh, and in that company, I saw like product wanted videos, marketing wanted videos, sales wanted videos, everybody wanted videos. And this one person, she was just like backlog. And, uh, and, and the tools were like that because like I started to learn Adobe Premiere and I failed. Like it was hard. It is hard to kind of get this timeline editor going and all that stuff. So I was like, there has to be an easier way. This is this is not sustainable. And then what we saw, uh, we saw Canva, and we saw how easy Canva had made design, and mm. any non-designer could do design. And and I was like, this is exactly what we want to build. We want to build a Canva for video. We want to make it very easy for anyone to become a video creator, a video editor, uh, and uh, and using online software as opposed to desktop heavy software that requires a steep learning curve. And so that's that's my mission. I mean, it's there should be, as a part of an office-like productivity suite where you have Excel and Word and PowerPoint, there should be a video editor right next to it so that you can, and because everybody's going to be using videos in the future and, uh, and we want to make it. I love that. That's amazing. And I think something that you've done really well, um, to your credit, is really build a solid team around Picture, a really solid product, a really solid team. When you were looking at kind of launching this and, and getting this company started, how did you kind of look at putting together the team that you currently have? Like, did you go and look for co-founders? And what was that whole process like for you? Yeah, I'll tell you the inter- first interesting story before that, because actually we had the idea that, hey, this is possible. So, um, oh, yeah. so I... Um, I had some time, and so this was summer of 2019, and uh, 
my son had just graduated from uh, the university there and he had been to a lot of hackathons and he said, dad, do you want to go to a hackathon with me? I was like, yeah, that sounds like fun. So, so I pitched this idea at the hackathon that, hey, we're, we have this idea. Can, can people help build this, this thing for, for, as a team? And, uh, and we had people who raised hands or four or five people who came on board and, and we had a team. It was a Saturday morning. We kind of, some of the guys stayed overnight and, and we built this prototype of something. The first version was text to video. So take a piece of text and convert a video, create a video out of it. And, uh, and overnight pe they were able to build the first prototype of, of big, big, well, what wasn't even called big tree, but it was just like something. And then we won the hackathon. It was like 200 people there and the BCs were the judges. And uh, while the team was doing the building, I was doing the market validation. I was calling every marketer I know, every person like you, Jaden, in a corporate marketing job. It was like, you know, hey, would you buy something like that if we had it? And we got like an overwhelming positive response to this. So I had market validation. We had tech validation. And then because we won the hackathon, I had like funding validation because all the judges were VCs. So so that like that was a very early validation over one weekend that hey it's possible to do this right then then we jumped into this then I got like uh, a couple of my co-founders from my previous company uh, Wind Shuttle some of the the early product managers that I'd worked with and uh, and we created a core uh, co-founding team of three people uh, usually they say when you find a found a team a founding team should have a hustler a hacker and a visionary, and okay. uh, and so I had the hacker who was, who was my CTO, uh, Vishal, who was also my co-founder at Wind Shuttle, and then um, we had the I was kind of the I was the hustler, uh, the sales guy, and then I had a I had a a product uh, person, Abed, and uh, and he was our our, our visionary for the product uh, led growth. So yeah, you need the team, and I feel like for any start, any good startup has a great. Did any of those original kind of hackathon members join the team or was it just for that one event? We, we tried to convince them, but they were like, you know, we don't, we don't want to leave, leave our jobs or we're still stuck on. So, but, but it was, it was a great, like it was a great uh, experience. going through that. That's time. awesome. Well, I mean, I'm sure it was still an amazing opportunity either way for them to kind of be at the, the beginning of that company. Talk to me a little bit about some of the pivots that you guys have had to make. What are some of the changes you've seen in the industry, maybe um, some things that you've had to change internally at the company and how has the landscape kind of shifted from back then till today? Yeah, really good question because initially my market validation was all this corporate marketers. So, uh -huh. so when we first built the product and we launched it in the middle of the pandemic in 2020, we're like, okay, let's go after corporate marketers because we have good market validation from them. Right. But nobody bit. They all said they would buy it, but nobody actually bought it. But the, the thing is, it was a great lesson in that, you know, people say something that you may want to hear, but, but, but when it act the real validation is when it's like, come put the money on the table, right? Or, or put your credit card in there. So that's the real validation. And, and what we also realized that the product wasn't quite ready for, for the corporate marketing world yet because the branding requirements, the kind of stuff that people wanted to do, the quality requirements were pretty high and uh, we were not there yet. So I, I believe we're still not there yet. So one of the big pivots we made was we started focusing on creators rather than enterprise marketers. And uh, and that was one of our biggest shifts and, and that really helped us take off uh, because creators, they're... They're like desperate for tools for video creation, video editing. A lot of people want to create YouTube channels or want to want to create, uh, and even like small marketers, small business marketers, uh, there are the the branding requirements are not that stringent. So so we were able to kind of get get in front of them, and over time, so that was one big pivot in the beginning. Um, but then over time, we're continuing to improve our product and add better quality videos and and uh, and. And, and just overall improve the quality. We just launched, for example, a Teams plan where people can collaborate to make videos. Uh, so, so that's that's um, we we found that that was like an essential. So now we're ready to kind of go back to the corporate marketers and see, okay, 
Yeah, I think that strategy overall is really solid. Um, you know, you talk about Canva. Um, I remember when I first discovered Canva, the thing that I that really stood out to me was just how simple it was to use. Um, I see this as kind of the same strategy you're deploying over at Picture. But essentially, I was using it in college for all sorts of things. It wasn't as complex or as sophisticated as different Adobe products I was used to, but it made things really easy and I was able to get them done really quickly. And then fast forward to when I had my first job out of college, um, being able to, I, I really just like fell back on that, even though I had access to all the Adobe tools, um, I still would use it because it was really easy. And I would actually show a lot of my coworkers in the marketing department, you know, Canva and how easy it was. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier. And before I knew it, like other people were starting to make um, different, you know, presentations with Canva and all sorts of things. And I think it really kind of is a, is a really good strategy to start with something really simple. And then, then it scales up as you add more features into more complex things. Talk to us a little bit about what the number one use case for Picture is today. What are people actually using on the platform? Yeah, so we have several uh, tools in there, uh, as you saw, uh, you've probably seen on our website. Uh, the most common use case for us is script to video. So you write something like a story that you're trying to tell with video. You write the script for the story. You put the script into Picture. And uh, it creates what we call faceless videos. So there's no person talking, but but there is uh, we we for every sentence in your script, we find the best matching B-roll stock content. So we we have licensed uh, places like Getty and uh, Storyblocks, and we search through those, and we have incredible search algorithms that will find the best matching visual automatically to every sentence, and and then it will stitch it all together. It'll put the text in the as captions in there with nice animations and everything. And then you, then it automatically, if you want, you can add a narrative like a, a text to speech, uh, AI voice over. Uh, you can also put your own voice if you want, but uh, a lot of our people will use AI voice over. And and music, we have a lot of music tracks. It automatically picks out a music track to go with it. So literally, in a matter of minutes, you can have a video starting from a text script. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's our most common use case. Uh, that's a really good use case for that. What are you using for the actual voice aspect of this? Are you using third-party tools or something? Yeah, we, uh, we're we using some of the best voices that are offered on the off the shelf. So we're not building our own model. So like uh, Google has so well said, 11 Labs, there's a bunch of different really good tools out there. Uh, but today what's in our product is uh, is... Uh, Google and Amazon and Microsoft Voices, some of the really good ones. Yeah, it's really cool. There's a lot of really awesome voice options that you can get right off the shelf. There's 11 Labs, um, uh, Well Said Labs, a lot of really awesome options. There's some lesser known, right? I think Meta is coming out with some open source projects where you'll need like a couple seconds to actually clone your voice. You can do all the voice cloning stuff on 11 Labs too. So yeah, a lot of really amazing options there. What is one of the biggest you know challenges you really have to overcome while while building this out? Uh, like challenges are the name of the game in a startup world <laughs> all the time. There's, it's it's a game of whack-a-mole. Like, so you figure out something that you solved and then something else comes up and something else comes up. Uh, but like in the beginning, actually, this whole thing of doing video on the cloud is a pretty challenging exercise. If you think about it, like the reason Adobe and Final Cut Pro, their desktop products is you can use all the power of your desktop to render the videos and stuff. Now, if you have to do it on the cloud, you have to really think of the algorithms and still make it efficient and, and optimize the cost and, and quality and, and all that stuff. So technically, that's one of the biggest uh, challenges. Of course, there's go-to-market challenges that that any company faces there's new competitors that always emerge there's uh, yeah there's so there's like a, a slew of things <laughs> and once you solve one you you discover there's like credit card fraud going on and there's like you said so <laughs> all kinds of challenges you mentioned at the beginning of this that you know i think it was the judges of that initial hackathon were vcs and, and so you got a little bit of validation from them there Talk to us a little bit about funding for Picture, what your situation's been, whether that's, you know, bootstrapping or raising funds and how that has kind of, uh, how the plot process has kind of played out. Uh, yeah, so we, 
in the beginning, we bootstrapped it. We were self, we self-funded the first couple of years, and because because you know you, you as you're building the product, you're trying to validate it, you're trying to get some market traction on it. Um, but as soon as we had this pivot to creators, and we started seeing uh, we in one summer in 2020, we saw a growth from like 50 customers to 5,000 customers in like two months. As soon as we made that decision uh, about uh, about creators, and uh, so that's when we uh, we went to some of the VCs that we'd been talking to before, and we showed them that hey, there's some traction there, and then we were able to raise our seed round. So we've raised a couple of seed rounds, uh, nothing big. It's this is all public. It's about five million dollars we've raised so far, uh, but we haven't raised a Series A yet, and uh, and we haven't had the need to because it's been we've we've seen a lot of growth, uh, especially since Chat GPT came out. We've seen a lot of growth in our business, yeah, and uh, and we we've, we've been able to kind of self-sustain. Uh, you know, something I've talked with a lot of founders about is kind of that moment that ChatGPT came out and how that kind of changed a lot for the industry. What did that moment look like for you guys over at Picture? What was what did that you know that that moment with all this explosive growth in AI? Did that shift many things for you? How you're building stuff? What, walk us through you know how how you kind of saw that whole how that the whole moment as it occurred. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll give you a. A reference point here from before chat GPT we were growing like 17 percent month over month uh, and then we got to a good milestone by November uh, and then then chat GPT came out and we've grown like you know 100x over the next month over month for the next three four months so we we've, we've grown like 7x in the last seven months uh, it's it's been pretty crazy. Yeah. So yeah, and and pa and the main the main way uh, that happened to us was uh, we were just we happened to be at the right place at the right time. A lot of a lot of startup successes are it feels like luck, and and it probably is. And uh, and you we were there, and then somebody created a video showing just like you were doing a podcast with AI voices. Somebody created a video saying that hey, use Chat GPT to create your video script. Put the script into Pictory and let it create a YouTube video and create a YouTube channel that way, and uh, and so so that some of those videos went viral. They were like you know millions and millions of views, and then our just our business just took off. And we didn't we didn't explicitly actually implement Chat GPT in our product. It was just like you know some of our users saw a way to connect the the things together. And then we've since we. Because we had AI in there already for our, like searching the right visuals, we have we have another piece of AI. So we didn't talk about another use case we have is you know say this podcast is supposed to say a thirty minute podcast and you want to create a two minute trailer of this podcast, right? So you would upload this video into Pictory, and Pictory will come up with the best two minute seg uh, segments that uh, that it would just like. It would use use our voices, our faces, everything. I mean, it's not replacing anything, but it's it automatically determining the best two minutes in that thing. So, so that summarization algorithm uh, we have since uh, leveraged uh, GPT algorithms, the OpenAI algorithms, to make the summarization algorithms much better. Okay, very cool. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So what do you kind of see as the future of AI based off of what's shifting right now? Um, maybe what's happening in AI and video, you know, as the, the CEO of this company, where do you kind of see this going in the future? Yeah, there is a, there's a lot of shifts underway and it's really hard for me to kind of think five years on the road. If I can, if I can envision a one year or a two year future, that is, that is going to be sufficient because like if you had asked me last year at this time and I, I wouldn't have predicted chat GPT. I mean, I, I don't know. And, and how much that would impact uh, things like that. So um, what we like, where you see things go is a lot more AI. Like we are not right now we're talking about like using stock visuals and, and combining B-rolls and all that stuff. But we've already seen some really good products out for creating like generative videos, generative images. Uh, you've seen Dali and Mid Journey and all these stuff, and uh, and it'll come out with generative video clips that that we can leverage 
to tell the whole story in a with like the same characters and 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 that's kind of the yeah that those are some of the things I can envision. I can envision a lot of personalization happening. So um, you know, like you make this video clip, uh, say for for your from your podcast, say you make a video clip, but perhaps you make hundred video clips for different audiences and it just like it personalizes it, especially for sales and uh, the, those kind of things. We're already again seeing that happening. Uh, and uh, and then you've, you've probably seen the avatars, that talking avatars, they're going to get a lot more realistic. Uh, and uh, and so, so I, I mean, there's so much that, that will happen in this field and we just want to stay up to speed. And we... Like our principle has been at Pictory is like we're not a foundational model company. Like unlike some of the other one, like OpenAI is they've built the foundational models. But we are we are going to be all about leveraging the latest and the greatest and the best models uh, to to and and create a great user experience for video creation and video editing. As you were talking, it was making me think about how incredible it is in the future. We'll probably get to a point where you can just describe what you want. Um, these videos are going to be automatically generated. You're going to be able to, you know, direct your own movies. And it's going to be cool because it's not just like uh, individual movie clips, but they're all going to be say, shot in the same style and the same mood and theme. And you're going to be able to do so many incredible things with AI and video. Um, amazing things you guys are doing over there. I know you're going to be at the forefront of this. If people are interested in trying out Picturey, where's the best place to do that? What's the best place to contact you and, and find out? Um, you know, if they have any questions or more about your platform, what's the best way to do that? So, uh, pictory.ai, pretty simple on our website. And uh, and myself, I'm Vikram at pictory.ai, as it says on the screen. <laughs> so, if, if people want to reach me or or, uh, or check out our website and check out our uh, product, we have a free trial and it's very easy to get started and, and try it out. But uh, yeah, so it's, uh, we make it super easy. All right, and I will also leave a link to Picturey in the description for listeners to find. But Vikram, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. It's incredible what you're building. It's amazing and very motivational to hear from someone that's been in the trenches for a while but has come out with such an incredible product. So we really appreciate it. Um, to the listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to the AI Chat Podcast. Um, make sure to rate us wherever you get your podcasts and have an amazing rest of your day. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.